Okay, I'm Dave. This is your Pin and Racing channel. If you ever thought maybe that I was crooked, bent, disturbed, not bent, um, and wondered why, this is why. This is my best friend, keep in mind, for many, many years, Tom. And these, I wake up to these texts on daily occurrences, and it just says, What's up, you pillow biting, saggy titted, slack jawed whore? That's it. <laughs> so that's probably why I'm a little crooked. Okay, past that, another follow up on compression. This has to be done to explain a huge problem somebody had where they sheared their flywheel key off and had to go rescue their bike the next day. And I thought, okay, I can explain that relatively easy. Uh, so in the last video, we're playing with compression and checking gauges and so forth. And that was good information, I think. Keep you out of trouble or explain some possible issues. Now on the compression front, when you're turning things over, um, there's always maybe a few questions that come to mind. Closed throttle versus open throttle. Um, if the bike's if the bike does start to turn too slow, yes, the compression will not build because the battery won't have the juice to turn the bike fast enough uh, to really build the compression. However, my bike was turning relatively decent, um, so I, but I put a bigger battery in it, um, one with quite a bit more cranking amps in it to see if it had more power or turned faster, and that would actually change the compression. And then, um, so we did, yeah, throttle plate open and closed. In fact, on the throttle plate open, I just took the throttle body off altogether. So that wouldn't even be a question, which is cool because you could see that it was off, so there's not any discrepancies. Then I took the reed catch completely out, so you could see if that changed things, if any. Um, so I will say this, it, the bigger battery didn't do a thing. Uh, it was still 230 with it being closed, no problem. This next video you're going to watch, though, is with the throttle body off. Here, I took the throttle body just completely off. The equivalent of more than opening the throttle for that argument's sake. Same. Reads out. Did that change anything? Two forty five. Okay, when the reads are out, you saw a heck of an increase. In fact, that's six percent increase if you do the math. That's actually a lot. And it could help you but it can also get you in big trouble. Here's how it can get you in big trouble. So it's known that for every thousand feet, you change elevation, uh, it's a change up or down of 3% in compression, the cranking compression. It goes up and down. So this is how things really screwed this guy up and it caused his flywheel key to break. So he was at 8,000 feet and he had an XCW and they have about 180 PSI stock at uh, sea level. So yes, of course it is low at 8,000 feet. Now you should have just adjusted for compression because 180 is a really good number. You could bump it up a little bit, 190, but you should have stuck in that range. It wasn't adjusted, it was highly overcompensated. So we got talked into this extremely high compression head insert and at 8,000 feet, the dude had 235 PSI when he turned it over. That right there is in the danger zone. It would never run, rev out. You're just pushing the components to the limit 
stupid, stupid, stupid. It was stupid for the guy to sell it to him. It was not intelligent for him to get talked into it. But at the time, honestly, he probably didn't know. So what happened? Well, he went down in elevation to go riding. They went down to 4,000 feet and they were, going to, they were going to start at 4,000 feet and they were going to try to wiggle their way back up to like 7,000 feet. So you just lost, so he's at 8,000, so you lost 4,000 feet. How much compression changed? 235, because this is an easy way to do it in your head, 1% is 2.35 times 3. Your 3% change, that equals 7.05 times your 4,000 foot elevation change equals 28 PSI plus your original 235, 263 is probably what happened to him down there. I mean, mathematically, that would have held correct. It held correct going the other way. So how did that shear this dude's flywheel key off and leave him stranded in the middle of nowhere? Luckily, he was there with the buddy with the toe strap, but if he wasn't, it could have been real bad. So on a bike with a Kickstarter, which every motorcycle should have a Kickstarter, this older one has a hole right here where you could put a Kickstarter. Everything is labeled on this side. So you have a Kickstarter that turns the clutch, that turns another gear, that turns the crankshaft. Everything's mechanical. With that kind of compression, it would have been hard to kick and turn over. You would have had to find it just past top dead center to get it spinning enough to probably kick it. And it would have been a bitch, but it wouldn't have broke anything, except maybe your ankle. These e-bikes don't have that especially ones with not backup kickstarters. So the starter spins this gear here, which spins this, uh, you know, flywheel here and everything transfers through that. There's a taper on this flywheel and there's a taper on the crankshaft. And if it's assembled right and the inside of this is heated up, you know, before it's slid on and you tighten it down, this is supposed to cool and grab onto that taper. And that's what's supposed to create that bond between these two things so there isn't slippage. You have a flywheel key in here. It's only for timing. So the flywheel is timed to your pickup coil here. Uh, however, with all that compression, you're trying to turn this thing over. He said, yeah, it turns slow. And then it would finally catch and then go. That's probably because you could get it just past top dead center. You have this gear turning this. At that point, the flywheel key did shear this thing spun, the bike wouldn't start, and life was over as it got into a gully down there at 4,000 feet and shut the bike off. So I hope you picked something up good from this video. There's actually a lot to learn there. You made a change in volumetric efficiency there, not a static compression, cranking compression kind of thing. That's just because it brought more air into it. So it's neat to see that you know, holding more air in the combustion chamber, whether it's recapturing it from a better pipe and shoving it back in there, maybe different reeds if it had a bigger reed cage, maybe a bigger throttle body, whatever the holdback is there, it's interesting to see how that works. You can also understand really how the change in an elevation works. You went from a higher elevation to a lower elevation. Just by doing that, you shoved more air in there and that really shows you what happens when you shove more air in there. And that's just here. That's just monkeying around with the gauge at a low cranking compression. It could be radically more when the bike's actually running. So before you get into issues, especially with these e-start bikes, keep that stuff in mind. I wouldn't go making radical changes. Just adjust for things along the way. Okay, well, thanks for watching this one. I think this was a, this was a big one. Uh, now we have to get into the crank angle thing and then port timing. Then finally we get to go running on this cylinder.